Let's get your Google Ads conversion tracking all set up with Tag Manager, timestamps below, along with some other helpful links and resources, including a copy of our Tag Manager playbook to help you plan out all of your conversion tracking. And when it comes to setting up your conversion tracking with Google Ads and Tag Manager, you're actually not going to start in Google Ads, you'll start in Tag Manager. And that's because you need to start by creating something called a trigger. So unlike all of the other codes you've most likely installed already, you need to come into Tag Manager and click on Triggers. And once you do, you'll be able to set up a custom trigger for your conversion because you don't want your conversion to fire on all of your pages, right? You want your conversion to fire on specific pages when people take a specific action. So for example purposes here, to keep things simple, we're going to be using a landing page and then a thank you page. So someone enters their email here and then of course they're taken to the thank you page. So we want to tell Google Ads every time someone hits this thank you page to count it as a conversion since that's our goal. Of course you can have purchases and other types of actions as well, but we'll go ahead and start here. So all you need is the URL of your thank you page. Now, there are some advanced features or triggers where you can set it up on a button click, although I don't recommend doing that. If you have a thank you or confirmation page URL, that's always going to be better than trying to dig into your data layer or your WordPress plugin and have it fire when a message pops up or someone clicks a button. So if you can, make a separate page. It's going to be a heck of a lot easier. Although I understand not all plugins allow you to do that, unfortunately. So we'll go ahead and click on new and we'll go ahead and give our trigger a, a name here. So I'm gonna just call this FEA lead. So I know what the action that we're tracking is. For trigger configuration, we're going to go ahead and select page view. Now, of course we don't want all pages because not all pages are converting or are conversion events. So we'll click on some pages and instead of paste uh, page, <laughs> page URL, right? So there are some other things you can do here with variables and you know if you have dynamic URLs in your checkout sequences, save that for another day, right? We're going to do page URL here and then we're going to say equals. So contains, let's say for example, all your confirmation pages say thank you in some part of them. So you could do something like that. So you look for a specific word although that can get a little tricky or messy. So I'm going to go ahead and say equals and type in the exact URL that we want to track, which is going to be this thank you page. So we'll go ahead and click on save. So page URL equals this. So anytime someone hits that page, it's a conversion, right? So we'll go ahead and click on save here. And then if we come to our overview, you'll see we have a workspace change. This is going to be our our trigger. So it's not live yet. Now we can jump over to Google Ads and create our conversion event. So to do that, inside of your Google Ads account, we'll click on Tools and Settings, we'll click on Conversions, and then we'll click Create New Conversion Action, or you can grab information about conversions you've already set up. We'll click on New here. We'll select Website Conversions, and it's taking a while to load, there we go. We are doing lead forms, so someone who's submitting a form. And then of course, conversion optimization options. This is where if you start having micro conversions where you're just tr tracking someone who adds something to cart or makes a small baby step, but it's not an actual event that you care about optimizing for. So for now, we'll go ahead and leave those alone. And then we're going to name it the exact same thing. We called it in Google Tag Manager, just so we know uh, we use the same name across, every, uh, across all of our just use the same name so you know which two are connected, right? So FEA lead and FEA just is a code for our, our funnel here. And then value, we don't want to use one. You can enter conversion values. You can set Tag Manager up so it actually pulls out the exact amount that was in the shopping cart on the confirmation page. That requires a data layer and some coding experience. So we'll skip that for now. Now, since we aren't making sales, we are just collecting contact information, we don't need to count every, every time the same person enters their email address. So if we left it at every, someone would come to our landing page, enter their email 10 times, and then it would count as 10 conversions. Well, this is the same person just doing the same thing over again, right? But if someone was buying 
10 times, then we would care, right? So we'll go ahead and leave it at one. View through conversion window. Everyone has their different yardstick on what this should be. I go ahead and leave it at a week. So what this is telling Google is, hey, if someone sees our ad and they click on it, and within a week they take this action, give that ad credit. And so obviously if you gave your ads 90 days, that means someone could click on something in January and then three months later, sometime in, in April, well, no, that's four months. I can't, I can do math. Sometimes three months later, oh boy. Then that ad would get the credit for that conversion. And of course, that's a really long time. So I'd say uh, seven days is, is good. And then you can go ahead and leave the, the rest of these alone. Obviously, if you want to be more advanced or you have someone else guiding you on how they want this account set up to, to be managed, then you can go ahead and change these. I'm gonna uncheck enhanced because I don't like Google making decisions for me. And then we'll go ahead and click on create and continue. And just like that, we've created our action and so our conversion. So we'll click on tag manager and there's two pieces of information we need to save. So first, we're going to go ahead and save our conversion ID. I'm going to save it to our Tag Manager playbook. Of course, you can save it to whatever documentation you want. This is linked up in the description. It's just here to help you map out your all of your codes and of course, your conversion events. So we'll go ahead and click on Next here. We'll go ahead and click on Done. And now we have our lead. I had to add one because I have more. Apparently, I used that already somewhere. So we'll go ahead and we're all set, good to go inside of Google Ads, so we can jump back over to Tag Manager and create our tag. So we can go ahead and click on Create New Tag. And then for our tag name, I'm just going to call it the exact same thing. I've been calling everything else, so I know what this tag is. And then we're going to say Google Ads, so I know what it's for. We'll click on Tag Configuration, and we'll click on Conversion Tracking. And then we need to drop in our conversion ID and our conversion label. So I'll come back over to our playbook, top copy the conversion label, copy the conversion ID, and then go ahead and leave the rest of this alone. You can always come back, be more advanced, play, play with the settings and, and get fancy. So for triggering, here's where it's different from everything else that you've probably done so far. Here, we want to say page view, not all pages. We don't want this to fire everywhere. We only wanna fire it when someone hits this page. So we'll go ahead and click on page view, and we will click on save. So now in our blurred out <laughs> table here, we have the trigger that we just set up and we have the tag that we just set up to only fire on the trigger. So now let's make it live and test it out. Fingers crossed it actually works, right? Kind of embarrassing if it didn't. So we'll go and click on submit here. And of course, just give some basic information about what we just did. So I'll just go ahead and copy this and say Google ads, and of course put in the ID and label. You don't have to be this specific, it just helps with knowing what the heck went on months, if not years ago. We have some of these that are, that are almost nine or 10 years old now, so it really does help. So we'll go and click on publish here, skip the singing as always, <laughs> and then we can see our version changes, all of our tags, our triggers that are set up. So let's go ahead and make sure that this is actually working. So what we'll do is we will use preview mode. So we'll go and click on preview mode here, and then it will ask for our URL. Now, you don't want to put in just the URL of your website. You want to put in the URL of the page right before what you want to test, right? So coming back to our example, we have our landing page here, and then we also have our one-time offer page. And so what we're going to do is we're going to copy the URL of our landing page, not our confirmation page. And then we want to see if the flow of what we want to track actually works correctly, right? So we're going to go ahead and come over to Tag Assistant. We'll go ahead and uh, paste that in there. We'll go ahead and connect. And once we do, we'll see that debug mode is connected. So we can go ahead and click on continue. This tag did not fire. That is a good thing. We do not want it to, we don't want it to be firing on this page. So now let's go to our landing page and then we'll go ahead and click on access now. And so our thank you page loads and you can see we're still connected to Tag Assistant. So we can come back over to our preview and we can see that the conversion tag fired. So that's what we want to see. We want to see the conversion tag firing. You do need to be in debug mode to make sure 
there are the tag assistant mode like this. So you can see all of the tags and triggers that are firing and you don't have to worry about trying to serve yourself an ad and click on it and get the right tag to, or triggers to, to fire. So that is all there is to it, to getting started with setting up your Google ads conversion tracking. So we can go ahead and exit out of this, stop debugging, and then go back to our tag dashboard and you are all set, good to go. So you can use, if we come back to our triggers, not variables, triggers, you can use this trigger for other platforms as well. So if you're driving traffic from multiple traffic sources, you can just say, hey, and you can connect tags from those other traffic sources to this this trigger. So that's what makes this part of part of what makes Tag Manager so powerful and so easy to use. So thank you so much for watching. Sincerely hope you're all set, good to go with your Google Ads conversion tracking. Comment below if you have any questions. Grab a copy of our Tag Manager playbook linked up in the description to help you with this process. We even included this where you can actually map out all of the triggers and customer journey and of course take notes so that you are organized and good to go when it comes to when tags should or should not fire across your entire funnel. So hit that like button, subscribe for more guides just like this one, and until the next, keep building the business you love.